A boss mom doesn't allow society to tell her that her goals no longer matter. She handles her business both inside and outside of the home. Welcome to the Boss Mom Movement Podcast with me, your host, Ashley White, where you'll hear me speak with millennial moms who have not allowed the title mom to stop them from achieving their goals. During this podcast series, we'll discuss how we balance it all and other mom-related topics. It's a space for all my bossy mamas, whether you're a entrepreneur, mama in corporate, or both. Being a boss mom isn't easy, but it's our lifestyle. So with that being said, all right, boss moms, let the movement begin. Mamas, it's Ashley here from the Boss Mom Movement, here to tell you about a skincare product line that is made for self-care. I know we are always doing stuff, we're always busy, and sometimes it causes us to be a little stressed out. So why not have a product that is going to not only improve your skin, but also your mindset? So it is a holistic product line that is just going to have anything from clay masks to face wash and just relaxing herbs and essential oils sourced from around the world, including Africa. So it's Black Mom owned and it's called Mahogany Hippie. That's H-I-P-P-I-E. You can find them at www.shopmahoganyhippie.com. Let them know Ashley from the Boss Mom sent you and let's get our self-care on because if we can't be our best self, we cannot be here for our family and for others around us. So again, Mahogany Hippie and let's get into this episode. Hey Boss Moms, welcome back for another Boss Mom Movement podcast with your host Ashley White. You are here for season four, episode six, and we are talking about enforcing positive disciplines with your children. So today I have a special guest to um, discuss this topic, Miss <laughs> Miss Shana K. Ariano. She is the founder of Connected Corrections Inc. and she is a full-time entrepreneur. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> no problem. I am excited to actually discuss this topic. Um, let's start off with telling the audience who you are and what Connected Corrections is. Okay, so again, my name is Shauna K. Ariano, and I am a millennial mom. And I am helping millennial parents because I realized I was saying mother and I had a friend of mine go, hey, what about the dads, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I say I help millennial parents break those negative parenting stigmas that we all grew up with while making those positive connections with their children. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, Connected Corrections was born, really. Um, I have a background in education. I started out as an elementary school teacher and I feel like my last group was definitely um, challenging. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out what is a way that I can reach these kids without the yelling, the screaming, the feeling like I have to bribe them with rewards. And, you know, because all of that, I was pulling out all the tricks in the book. And for some reason, it was just not working. And mm -hmm. I, you know, on a random Google search, I typed in, you know, what can get kids to listen? And up came positive discipline. And I found that with positive discipline, not only did it help me in the classroom, mm -hmm. but it was something that helped me as a mom myself. Um, and I know we'll get into that a little bit more into the show, but that's just what I do. I host parenting workshops that teach positive discipline. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I think for me, like instantly, right, when I saw um, positive disciplines, I was like, okay, what does this mean exactly? Because, you know, I feel like anytime you have this discussion, it, it gets a little tricky because, of course, every household does different things when it comes to discipline your, disciplining their kids. And, you know, what works for one may not work for the next. And that's okay. Um, but I was just like, okay, in my mind, instantly, I thought negotiating with my kid on what I say goes, like, absolutely not. And like, th that was like my, my instant thought, but I was just like, you know what, but I want to have this conversation because I really want to learn more about positive disciplines and what that really looks like. So 
how did that go? I know you said you first introduced it with your students. How did that, how was that experience and what are some of the um, discipline strategies you used with, and what age group were your, were your so students? So I taught fifth grade. Okay. So these are nine, 10, and sometimes 11 year olds, or, you know, just depending on where that birthday uh, lies. But funny enough, when I know there's a lot of buzzwords out right now, we have conscious parenting, we have positive parenting, we have all of that where you naturally just think it means that you're super permissive, meaning you just do a lot of pampering, fixing, rescuing, you know, your child can't experience anything negative and you're constantly there just breaking that fall every single time where positive discipline is actually one of the few um, parenting, positive parenting um, programs that actually de deals with the belief behind the children's behavior. So a lot of times, a lot of these parenting programs are saying, well, why is your child doing this? Or why is your child doing that? Where positive discipline is going to get to the root cause of that. Um, so it's not focused on the external where it's like you're rewarding them and you're punishing them, but it's literally mm -hmm. making sure that you develop them as a whole person, teaching them how to be, um, I don't wanna say self-reliant, self -reliant, but being knowing that they're capable to solve their mm -hmm. own problems because we're here teaching them along the way to do so. Mm, okay, definitely not what I imagine. <laughs> no, listen, listen, <laughs> I, I, I always say it's doing the right thing when nobody's looking, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you're teaching yeah. those skills up until, where you're not waiting until you're in the heat of the moment on 10 to then make that the moment. Because right. in one of the demonstrations that I want to do is you're seeing how in the moment, nine times out of 10, or sometimes 10 out of 10 is not the proper time to handle it. And if you think about it, most parents can agree that's when you try to discipline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in the act of them not doing, I guess, whatever it is that you're requiring them to do. Right. And then now it's like a, well, depending on the age of the child, exactly, a screaming that's why that. You know, exactly. And that's where that the power struggle or when I was mentioning first, you know, getting to the the whole root cause or the belief behind the behavior, because mm -hmm. if not, then you're literally constantly having to talk about the same things or discipline for the same things, because right. while you may think the punishment is working, it only just kind of surfaced, stopped it in the moment. But that right. doesn't mean that you solve the problem because next week, next month, whatever the case is, you always notice those same things happening over and right. over again. And yeah. I think that's where that frustration comes from. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can just think about me growing up. I mean, I wasn't a kid that necessarily got a lot of whoopings. I've, I've got whoopings, um, you know, and I think for me in the moment, okay, I don't, want to get a whooping again so I'm not going to do it but then it's like okay I'll probably do it again at some point later right or something for else. me <laughs> right something that worked for me was more so the punishment I will say because I was I wanted to go out with my friends I wanted to keep my phone like I'm not trying to do anything that's going to result in this happening and even though it did a couple of times happened, you know, just growing up. Okay. I, I misbehaved or did something that my parents said, don't do just because we're kids and that's what we do. We're all, we're going to push the button of the, whatever authority, you know, whether it's the teacher or parent until we understand, okay, this is probably something that I should not be doing. Like, <laughs> you know, it could put me in danger or whatever the case is, you know, if my parents saying don't skip school and I've decided to skip school. Because in that moment, I don't understand why I shouldn't be skipping school because I want to go and do it. Right. And so I think that's like just but growing up and thinking how I grew up, mm -hmm. I was instantly like, OK, I'm going to do this with my child or I'm not going to do this with my child, even more for having kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you mentioned when you talked about punishment. Mm -hmm. I always like to start like this. Uh, what do you think was like the worst punishment that you've gotten as a kid? Probably getting my phone taken. 
your phone taken. All right, and name one thing that you would have possibly did to get your phone taken. Mm, probably for me, one thing would probably be grades. Okay. My so let's say grades. Mm -hmm. So you got a D on your test. Your belly's already rumbling because you already know what's about to happen, mm -hmm. right? Now it's give me the phone. You exchange the phone. Do you then think to yourself, oh man, I need to study harder so I don't get that D? At that point, I was probably thinking of ways to not give up my phone. <laughs> you, you, you get what I'm trying to say as to why I'm so glad that we have this because it's all, that's the aha moment. Sometimes mm -hmm. as parents, like it's quick, right? So mm -hmm. give me your phone automatically. She had to learn her lesson. Yeah, she learned it. But no yeah. child is ever thinking in the middle of getting punished oh my gosh, I have to change my behavior so I cannot get punished. You're yeah. going to rebel. You're going to either rebel. You're either going to uh, think of a way to sneak away around it. How can mm -hmm. I not let them see this grade? Or you're going to be tap dancing now, right? Super mm -hmm. people pleasing, creating that. So when you think about it like that, punishment is never ever going to be equal to let me change my behavior. Yeah. Versus if you're coming home with a D, chances are it was, were you studying? Do you even know how to study? Do you understand the material that's caught, you know? And there's so mm -hmm. much more to that than give me your phone because give me yeah. your phone didn't prevent you from getting any more failing grades for the rest of your school history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I will say, you know, it would be things like leading up to it because my parents were good with talking to me, like mm -hmm. figuring out the route. Okay. Is it that you need to study more? Like, is, is this why we are here in this situation? Okay. Boom. So let's say it is that I need to study more. Yeah. I just haven't been studying and I'm just, I know I have a test and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do to prepare for it. Right. And so then it would grow into, okay, we've already established what the problem is. You're choosing now to not study. Mm -hmm. Give me your phone. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, of course, you know, still in my eyes, and, and I could be wrong, I feel like, you know, kids can know right from wrong and still choose wrong because of that's course. just what they want to do, right? That's just, I mean, we were all kids before. That's just what it's like. Okay, so I know I need to study some more but I don't feel like studying. I want to talk on the phone or I want to watch TV or whatever mm -hmm. the case is. Okay, so now you need to be punished. I, I mean, at least for me, that, that's mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. it was. Um, so what would a positive or, uh, yeah, a positive discipline look like in a scenario like that? You literally walked it through all the way. The only follow-up question I was going to ask was, did you have a say in what the punishment was going to be? So during that sit down, what did that look like? Um, was it okay, Ashley, you know, we're going to make sure that every day you're dedicating X amount of time to whatever subject it is that you need to study. Is that something mm -hmm. you agree to? You know mm -hmm. what? Well, what does your home schedule look like? You know what? I see, you know, maybe you're struggling with time management. So when you come home, maybe we need to sit down together, either as a family or, you know, whichever parent dealt with that with you. And you know mm -hmm. what? We're, this is what your schedule looks like after school. What do mm -hmm. you think that should look like? And right. opening up that dialogue because it's what? Remember that it's doing the right thing when nobody's watching. So you're now right. learning a life skill. This is that taking time for training. So it's not you need to study because even as a classroom teacher, me telling a child you need to study, what does that even look like for someone who does not know how to study? Right. Demonstrating that after school, you take out your homework, you take out your agenda, you spend look over your note you know what i mean whatever that conversation right. looks like mm -hmm. that's that modeling and maybe i need to model with you for a week what your come home routine looks like what exactly. studying looks like 
what your type of studying looks like. Do you need to make flashcards for your vocabulary words? Do you need to whatever your thing is, but was that modeled to you on what that looks like? So that means on week two, now mm -hmm. I can say, even if I catch you in the, t the living room watching TV, it's me saying, hey, Ashley, what did we agree to? Mm -hmm. Because remember, we sat down together and it's not me telling you what you should do, but we agreed on that. Mm -hmm. Kind okay. and firm and it's respectable, not only to the parent, but it's also to the child because now I'm holding you accountable to something that we both agreed on. It's not me telling you, you need to go study because mm -hmm. now that sounds like you're doing it for me. You're not doing it for me. It's for your benefit. Right. So how can we help you succeed? Mm. So if I'm catching you on the couch, it's not a back and forth. It's not a power struggle. It's me mm -hmm. holding you accountable for maybe younger kids. Um, I have one here where it's like a routine chart. So mm -hmm. if it's bedtime, and I point to, we did dinner, we did book. She can already tell me what comes next mm -hmm. because we agreed to that. We sat down, we did it together. Those routines have been established. And right. I think even with myself, I catch myself, you know, I came from a Caribbean household. So it was no mm -hmm. explaining. A lot right. of it was always having to just figure it out. So mm -hmm. sometimes even as a parent, I have that bias of what do you mean you don't know or you should know. Right. But then right. If, I'm not, if I'm not literally taking the time out to show you how to do something, is it fair to expect that? Right. No, it's not. And I, I like the way you went through it. Um, it definitely gives me a different perspective because I can be, you know, authoritative to where I'm like, OK, do what I said when I say, you know and what I'm saying? Are. And we are. Yeah. Super and there's no conversation. Like I'm the parent, you're the child. And even though my son is, I mean, he can't even talk, but I, I do, you know, he knows no. And he knows it so well that he starts He'll tell you so no. I'm no. like, he, he don't even, it's like, no instant cry. And I'm just like, nine months, where do you get this from? Like, what? Is <laughs> so I'm like already prepared myself. Like, okay, my kid is going to, is going to be, as he's going to be like, no, I don't know what that means. No, I, you know what I'm saying? But it's like that balance, right? Because it is about res the way they respond. And firm. Exactly. And firm. Because when you're too, when you're too kind, that's permissive. Your child does that whatever part. they want. And that's what we fear. If I ever lean too much, mm -hmm. my kid is going to be out there just doing whatever they feel like they want to do. Yeah. Then and I'll be about honest, positive <laughs> disciplines, when I saw that, that is instantly my thought, like, okay, we need to know who the parent is and who the child is. And I, I can't be too lenient to where it's being taken for granted. But I, I, I definitely see like what you're saying in terms of, okay, it's like, you know what the schedule is or, you know, you know what the rules are. Maybe let me not tell you, but maybe remind you, hey, do you remember this is what we agreed to? So let me ask you this. So when we do that, let's say the child, you know, okay, they can tell you what comes next. They're not doing what comes next, but <laughs> they can tell you. Where do we go from there? Like, what does positive discipline look like once we keep having to reiterate? And that's the thing. You wouldn't keep reiterating because now you're breaking your boundary. And remember, mm -hmm. just because you're being respectful to your child doesn't mean now you're disrespectful to yourself. You mm -hmm. hold your own boundary. And that's, you know, where you personally decide what that is. Am I going to? Re I mean, I think that also depends on the age of the child. The child, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I know I'm definitely going to have to repeat a lot more for mm -hmm. my three year old, right? Than I would be patient enough to do for my twelve year old, right? <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? And uh, I have a twelve year old son, ten year old daughter, three year old daughter. Ooh. So that is like three kids in three different ages. <laughs> exactly. It looks like three different things, right? But I always feel like that core principle is always still there where mm -hmm. I'm not going to be so positive that now I'm like, I twitching, drinking at the end of every night. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> because 
you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I feel like that is always important to say because even 10, 12 years in, I'm still not going to act like, oh my God, there's not days where I'm just like, okay, <laughs> yeah. all right, everybody find a space and get to it quickly. Right. I need a moment. You, you know what I mean? Because that's mm -hmm. not realistic either. It's mm -hmm. just holding myself accountable because no matter what, I am the adult in the situation and mm -hmm. I have the um, capability of emotional intelligence. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. before I feel myself getting to 10, mm -hmm. um, I can even tell a quick story. I remember um, when I first started teaching and, you know, for all my teachers out there, you know what that first year looks like. It's, it's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like your first year is either you're going to love it or you're going to completely hate it. Mm -hmm. And I was um, doing really good, but I felt like at home I was struggling hard mm -hmm. um, with just keeping everything together. And mm -hmm. I remember one morning I was um, just on 10. You know what that looks like when you're just 10 seconds too late. So that means your whole schedule is off track. And right. I need to get to work on time. They're already talking about I'm always late and I'm getting the kids ready. Um, yeah. And I'm just yelling and I'm frustrated. And I'm just like, you guys need to be ready. Come on. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? And you're on 10. Right. And I go upstairs and, you know, you bust open the door and you're like, what's take? And they're literally sitting on the bed, um, holding each other in tears. And I'm just like, obviously feeling like big doo-doo right yeah because yeah. now you're like what 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 what's the problem now what and they're just like my son goes why you always have to yell you're always just yelling and mm. that moment for me really kind of just hurt my feelings you know mm -hmm. because i just felt like oh my god I am my mom and yeah. I love my mom to death, but that's just naturally how she communicates. Mm -hmm. If you don't hear it, even if you genuinely just did not hear it, mm. you're being yelled at, you're being shouted at, you know what I mean? And yeah. so you're always like on edge because you don't know what's the thing that's going to get you barked at or yelled at or screamed at. Mm -hmm. So it may, you, you know what I mean? And I was just like, right wow, everything that I said I was not going to be, my whole, how do I go to school, put on this face as, you know, new teacher of the year, you, you're so well with discipline in your classroom, you have people mm -hmm. coming into your room to model this great thing that you're showing everybody. Mm -hmm. And then your kids at home are on yeah. a bed, holding each other, crying because you cannot stop yelling. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. that's tough. And, and I think sometimes we, like you said, it's like that power struggle, and just trying to make sure that the child or children know levels, right? Um, but I've, you know, I've never, I believe in disciplining because I, I do think, granted, different ways and different correct, things, correct, but correct, I definitely correct. believe in it because. It, we're not just about to run around and do, and do whatever, whatever we want to do. But in the same breath, I don't think you have to beat your kid crazy. Like, you know, and, and it's, I guess it's twofold because I, I'm not going to say I don't believe in weapons. Like I have never I gotten in one. I in a Caribbean house. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I definitely as a child that did not get many, you know, feel like you can discipline without being physical, you know, and it's even to the yelling, like sometimes I do feel myself even now. And he's so young, like getting frustrated if he's like, won't stop crying. And it's just like, I've given you everything that you could possibly need or want, you know, I've changed your diaper. I fed you like, what is it? Because you are under pressure. Like, like you said, this external things you're under pressure because you're trying to get to work and make sure that you have a good face there right meanwhile it's spilling over at home and I find myself having to catch myself as well like okay 
I'm getting 10,000 emails and messages because I'm work from home. So we're all remote. So this is how we are communicating. And I'm all this stuff is just coming at me. And then you're over here, you're screaming. And you're, I'm like, and sometimes you do have to just take a step back and, and um, breathe. Listen, <laughs> and I cannot stress that enough. Um, two things. I know I, I wanted to talk about the curiosity questions, but even in this moment, uh, in the workshop, there's this activity, I have it right here. It's called Brain in the Palm of Your Hand. If you follow me on IG, if you've seen me do it before. And mm -hmm. it is just a quick demonstration um, where you hold your palm up and the, the, wrist, the wrist part, here, let me make sure I hold it like this so I can do it like this. The wrist part of your palm, it represents your brainstem, right? Mm -hmm. This is where your fight your fight or flight freeze response part of your brain. Now, if you go ahead and you fold your thumb across your palm, mm -hmm. right? Your thumb is going to represent your limbic system. And this is where you process emotions and you store memories. So okay. it's also where you have that safety radar. So go ahead and fold your fingers over your thumb and you're going to make a fist. Mm -hmm. So your fist, that represents the cortex. So the prefrontal cortex is the only place where rational thinking and emotional control takes place. All right. So this is where you regulate your emotions. Um, you regulate your interpersonal relationships, your um, response, flexibility, intuition, social cognition, self-awareness, you know, all that rational stuff. Your brain mm -hmm. has to be in this state to do that. Now, like you said, your baby's crying, your emails are coming in and all those things are happening. What happens? You're going to flip your lid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now when you flip your lid, what do you notice? That all of that is now exposed, midbrain. Mm -hmm. You literally scientifically, cause you know, we are in the age of fact checking. Right. Mm -hmm. You literally cannot rationally think or solve any type of problems when your lid is flipped. You just can't. This is what's going to happen now. Now you're barking. Right. You're yelling. I said, be quiet. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Right. Think about right. With your spouse. Think about with any relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be exclusive to your children. But when you're in this state, mm hmm. You can't not even, rash, you're not rationally thinking anymore, right? Right. And why do we always feel like this is the time where we should solve problems? This is the time when we have to talk to our children. This is the time where they can't, who, what's going to happen if they, they're going to get away with it? Right. If don't address it right now. They're going to get away with it. Yeah. But Instead of just coming back when it's all, when the lid is down. <laughs> And now it's actually, it's activated. Right. I love these workshops because it's not lecture. I'm not like PowerPointing you to death. Mm -hmm. It's these type of experimental activities because even as a teacher, I found that I can say something 3000 times, but unless you're literally acting it out, experimenting, doing it, mm -hmm. it's like that connection because everybody does this experiment and you're thinking about the time, like, oh damn, when I was on 10, Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm thinking with my right. husband. I'm thinking about with my friend. Absolutely. I'm thinking about with my boss. I'm thinking about with anybody where I'm on 10. First of mm -hmm. all, I'm not even hearing what you're saying to me. Mm -mm. I'm only thinking about what matters to me in that moment. Yeah. Right. And, and in then, that moment, you're going to get all of it. <laughs> and then what? We feel like the child is going to get away with it. We mm -hmm. feel like we're not a good parent if we don't handle it right now, right? Or I'm gonna turn my child into this monster because they're just gonna never be able to know that if I don't solve this right now, that whatever that weird fear that we have, what happens yeah. if you talk about it later? What, what happens? Nothing. And even I always used to think that we have to make our children feel worse in order mm. to get them to act better. Yeah. But when has that logically ever happened with anybody, right? If I'm already feeling bad about something that I did and you come and pile on, why didn't blah, 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 
that's going to make me all of a sudden go, yes, you know what? I think I should just get better. Yeah. And I know you're, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to, you know, your kid, your, your child is nine months. So obviously, you know, it's like regular baby stuff, crying, fussing, you know, that kind of stuff. But as they get yeah. older, I think of like my three-year-old spilling juice or spilling something. She spills something. I'm annoyed because probably whatever I'm annoyed about, but that triggers what I'm feeling. So then I go, oh my God, every single time you always have to be spilling something. Right. So is that going to be the thing that makes her never, ever spill anything again? Mm-hmm. Or is spilling things just part of her learning development? Boom, right. with my 10-year-old. She's responsible for cleaning out the bathroom after she's done brushing her teeth. She mm. forgets to do it. Oh, my God, every single time you're, you're supposed to know what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Is that going to be the thing that makes her go, you know what? Tomorrow I better make sure I remember how to do this. Right. And it goes on and on and on. And it really makes you think that children actually do better when they feel better. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's where that positive part comes in. Yeah. It's firm, meaning you're holding your boundaries. You have rules, you have expectations, but you're mm-hmm. also kind enough to realize that mistakes are opportunities to learn. When my child yeah. is doing something wrong, this is actually a great moment for me to teach. This is a mm-hmm. great moment for me to model. This is a great moment for me to let them know that they're check your pulse human. Yeah. And this is how you recover from this mistake. Not as an opportunity for me to boom, 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 beat them down more because mm-hmm. I expect more from them. Right. Hey moms, it's Ashley here from the Boss Mom Movement here to invite you to join me and the Boss Mom Mastermind Group. This is a small group that I've created to help us as like-minded women and moms just accomplish our goals. We'll meet on a monthly basis, but you also have the opportunity to have a community at your fingertips as you'll be invited to a private um, sectioned off group where we'll just be able to discuss on a daily basis different goals that we have for the month and just keep each other motivated and accountable. In addition to that, you will receive um, a special discount on merchandise and upcoming events. So like I said, join the Boss Mom Mastermind group. The link is in my bio. And let's just build this community and check off these goals and keep each other accountable. So I hope to see you ladies there. And also something you said earlier is like having those conversations. Before like that's time. the starting part you know, starting point rather is like, yes, they're children, but that doesn't mean they don't have anything to say. Now I'm not saying in every situation, like they should be saying something back because it may not be a time for you to say anything, just listen, but having those conversations and really understanding the child, you know, and I, I will definitely say I commend my own parents for having conversations with me, you know, like my dad, I mean, he is, it it takes a lot for him. Like I would probably say my mom was the more disciplinarian um, when it came to my parents because I'm a daddy's girl, like not to say that baby girl can't do no wrong, but you know, they definitely had their- And that's that balance, the kind Mm -hmm. and the firm, the kind and the firm. If I was a single mom before I became married to my two Mm -hmm. older children, right? Mm -hmm. So- that responsibility of having to be kind and firm. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Sometimes that balance is a lot easier depending on the personality of the parents, obviously. But you know what I mean? Right. When you have one to balance out the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it doesn't make you weak. Like I know sometimes I, um, I was thinking about a conversation I had with my girlfriends the other day. And um, one said, you know, like she just apologized to her kid, I guess, after disciplining. And I, as we're having a conversation, I'm like, you know, it's not necessarily such a bad thing. I mean, I don't know what the situation was, but, you know, just thinking if I did do something to my kids to make them feel a certain way, like you just said uh, um, in your story and making your kids cry, I wouldn't feel bad you know apologizing after that because you you don't realize in that moment when you're angry and you're just spewing out stuff that you know you could be hurting their feelings and I do believe in okay you don't need to hurt your kids feelings but like you said teaching point you know words matter the, the, yeah. words matter think about they grow up. think about something yeah. somebody said to you I have a 10 year old daughter and um 
I'm always obviously I didn't talk to her about saying this. So I'm going to frame it in a way that's super general. But mm-hmm. just even the other day, I said something. And you realize, you know, if you're checking yourself and I'm continuing to do what I do. And I went in her room and she's kind of like, you know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. what's the matter? And she was like, nothing. You know how they do nothing. And I was like, did it something I say made you feel some type of way? She was like, yeah, when you said da, 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 da. Mm hmm. And I realized in that moment, it wasn't for me to defend myself. Mm -hmm. It was literally, like you said, to offer up that apology. Because the one thing I always feel like is that's a valuable relationship to me. Mm Kind of like if your friend says something, hey, you made me feel some type of way. Right. Whether it was your intention or not, if someone's telling you that and you value that relationship, just acknowledge that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And the connected corrections part, I don't want the only time I interact with my children is to be a negative something, a negative something, me pointing out a negative, me, you mm-hmm. know, it, it's always a, ne- a negative interaction. Mm-hmm. Have those positive connections, right? Absolutely. Because if you connect before you correct, it makes that. Sometimes they punish themselves because they already know they did something wrong. Right. Absolutely. And it's a psychological thing, too, because it does start in the home. A lot of times people don't even realize the relationships that people have as adults and outside of the home is because of what happened in the home, you know? And so like you say, like the positive aspects of it, like you don't want your kids to look at you in a negative light, like everything I I know everything dealing with my mom or dad is going to be negative because that's all they spew out is negativity. Now I'm an adult and that's what I do to other people. Or you realize a lot of parents, especially um, the ones that no longer have the children in their home, you realize that now that they don't have to, they don't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing when you're a kid and you have to, but now that you're adult and you don't have to sometimes that's where those estranged relationships come from and it's from those interactions that you have as a child and i always say you know i give my mom a lot of grace being an immigrant coming here uh, to america with no family um Mm -hmm. then getting divorced and having to just literally raise your children alone um Mm -hmm. under high stress And, and i i see that now as an adult You know what I mean? But I'm not going to act like as a child, I did not wish I had a different mom or wish I had a mom that did this or wish I had a mom that did that. But it took a lot of going back and even realizing and seeing her as a woman and Mm -hmm. not as a mom. And again, that's where this community of no perfect parents come from. Mm -hmm. Um, When I initially started talking about those parenting um, stigmas, that you have to be this perfect parent and your children are not supposed to see you sad. Your children are not supposed to see you in any other state except happy. Exactly. But then when they experience those emotions, what does that look like for them? If they've never seen you upset, they've never seen you sad. They've never seen you any type of thing, but happy. And now as a human, they experience and feel that. Right. Does that make them not, you know what I mean? Like these things that we create, like, does that make them not a good parent? Now they're trying to put on this face of always being happy, ignoring emotions that they may have because in their mind, like you shouldn't display that. Right. But but what is a perfect parent parent? Because what is a perfect person? Like it doesn't exactly. Exactly. And granted, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things. Like, exactly. You know, you, I always tell people like, these are just resources, tips, tricks, advice. However, Correct. do what works for you. Correct. <laughs> because I always realize that with anything, right, mm-hmm. it is just another tool, right? Right. A lot of times parents spank, hit, yell, scream because that's the the only thing you know. We only know only about what, five discipline tools, right? Punish, Mm -hmm. spank, reward, hit, or yell. 
Those are the ones that we just are equipped with. All the right. other things take research and practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. if I had something, and that's the way I always thought about positive discipline. If I had something in my toolkit that I can pull out in the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. why not? Right. And as I learn and grow, because I'm always learning and growing, it helps mm -hmm. it a lot easier. Do I never yell? I'm human. Of course, there are times where I am right. yelling. But <laughs> I was I just going to say, I'll probably have a mixture of them all. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. But I do know that it's not my go to. Right. It's not the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. Am I my three year old? Am I popping? Absolutely not. Because I remember when I had my 12 year old, that was the only thing I knew. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. Right. But with the three year old, you realize like, oh, I have so many more tools that it may never come up. Or if it does come up, I know how to recover from that to where I'm not like, that's my go to every single time she's doing something I don't want her to do. Yeah. And like you just even shared, though, that was from your first child to now your third child. And so you learn these things because instantly, like in my mind, too, as a first time mom, I'm, that's what I know. OK, pat, pat. But now, like my child. He likes to hit. And so I'm like, okay, maybe it's the pat pat. Is he getting it is. that from, from that that he thinks that and he laughs because he doesn't know, but he will definitely smack the glasses off your face. <laughs> because he's just like I and know, those, and then and those are laughing, cognitive like, things where I remember even as a first time mom, um, even in education, I would say my kids grew with me through because I was the mom, you know, I was a teen mom. So my child was here mm -hmm. and I was doing homework like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So even when I'm like developmentally, a lot of um, parents go into having children without even knowing that child development yeah. where touching pulling, grabbing, taking things down. That's all a part of how they learn their environment mm -hmm. and creating those spaces that are safe for them to do so. Yeah. Without feeling like I need to punish them for doing things that a toddler would normally do or punishing mm -hmm. them for doing things that a five-year-old might naturally do or punishing my 12-year-old for things that 12-year-olds do. Yeah. So I'm always constantly having to check myself on that, too. Mm -hmm. Is this really a behavior issue or is this just something developmentally my child is going to do? And again, is it a teachable moment for me to use that yeah. as a way to correct? I think I'm going to just start crying when he does it so that he knows, like, you're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy doesn't like when you slap her. But like you said, definitely developmental because I think, you know, he's learning. He's like, okay, I'm going to grab your eye. Like, you know, like it's in your uh, mind. Like, why, why would you want to do that? You know, or grab your mouth while you're talking. And nine months <laughs> is like, it's like, it's so cute because they're not babies, right. like little babies, yeah. but then they're not toddlers yet. Mm -hmm. is, is he walking around like holding and walking around and. We're standing, we're trying to make his baby steps, literally, oh, like, my gosh, and yeah. then taking things, you know, he's so infatuated with uh, the plugs, of course, you know, all moms at this stage, you know about that. So we have them plugged up, but then he's still, you know, maybe it's one that's not plugged up and it's actually something in it. So now he wants to go and take it out and see what that is. And, you know, it's, it's he's, he's moving learning. around. I was going to say he's moving around and by summertime, you are going to see how uh, I think from nine to one, they change into these people that you're like, yeah, you that's what like my boyfriend baby. says all the time. He's like, he's literally a person, babe. He's like, I'm like, yeah, he is a whole person. Like, I'm sure you can see his personality already. Absolutely. Very silly. Like he's so sweet already though. So and that's my thing. I'm like, Oh, I want you to stay like this. It's like, even though, you know, he's going to have his time he, he grow as he grows, but I say my son is 12 and he is still a sweetheart. So oh, yeah, they, oh, they, <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that stage. Don't miss yeah. it, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm enjoying it, but I'm I know I'm gonna enjoy you being a little more independent as well. Um, but I I want to I know you 
talked about the curiosity and the demonstration. Oh, okay. Uh, since you have a younger child, uh, mm -hmm. I know I sent you the ones ahead of time. We can do the script for the, um, I believe it's until 12, right? Or five? Yes. Teens. I think it's it. Well, the first one, yes, three to 12, yes. All right, so this is an activity called, uh, it's it's called Curiosity Questions, and it's centered around the whole acts don't tell. And usually parents are saying that they're tired of repeating themselves or mm -hmm. they're constantly having to um, reiterate why, 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 you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? So mm -hmm. this activity just kind of helps, I always say, bring to light. Mm -hmm. what we sound like to our children. So mm -hmm. um, okay. I also have the questions here so we can role play twice. Okay. Uh, you can start out with being the parent or I can start out with being the parent and then we can kind of go from there. Whichever okay. one you want to do first. You can be the parent I talking to me as a child or we can reverse it. Okay, so I, I can start being the parent. Um, okay. All right, and I'll be the child. Let me get the questions. And I am actually going to post these questions in the show notes, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I think, you know, showing um, the audience. So even though you all will hear us doing the role play, you can actually see them too um, when you're right. listening to the episode. Perfect. I just want to pull it up. All right, perfect. Okay. So we'll start with parents of a child three through 12 telling, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so I'm going to be the child. Okay. Go brush your teeth or you have a, or you'll have a mouthful of cavities. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything and really like okay. exaggerate. So they hear what that sounds like. Pretend you are mom. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to just read the questions or just say that one again? You can read them. You can continue with the next one. I'm just saying, you know, okay. like really go in as if you're just tired of saying this over and over again. Okay. Don't forget your coat. Go to bed now. Do your homework. Stop fighting with your brother. Put your dishes in the dishwasher. Hurry up and get dressed or you'll miss the bus. Stop whining. You are driving me crazy. Pick up your toys or I'll give them to children who don't have any. Now. That was it. Right? Now yeah. imagine being the child. So in the workshop, the way this is usually acted out, one, mm -hmm. the parent is usually standing on top of the chair and the mm -hmm. child is the one kneeling down. Okay. So as you're saying that, you're, you're kind of speaking down to them. And, and you hear what that sounds like when we're saying these things, because I know I sometimes say it and mm -hmm. you don't realize what that sounds like mm -hmm. or possibly sounds like to a child. Now yeah. I'm going to be the parent and you be the child. And now I'm going to ask. Mm -hmm. So Ashley, what do you need? So your teeth will actually feel really squeaky clean. What do you wear so you'll be warm outside? Ashley, what's next on your routine, your bedtime routine chart? Ashley, what's your next plan for your homework? Mm -hmm. How can you and your brother solve this problem? What did we decide on our family meeting to do with the dishes when we're done eating? What's your plan for catching the bus on time tomorrow? What words can you use so I can hear you? What is your responsibility when you're finished playing your toys, Ashley? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, what were you thinking when you heard me asking you these things? The answer, but also going to do it. All right. What were you feeling? Bad. Like, I, sh I should know what I should be doing or how I should be behaving, and I'm not doing it. And then what were you deciding? To go do it. <laughs> do you see how it, remember I told you with positive discipline, it's taking the responsibility off of me 
and literally putting it on the child because now you feel capable. Mm -hmm. I'm not fishing for an excuse. I'm literally thinking about what you're saying to me because Mm -hmm. that your brain is literally wired to think when you're asked something. Yeah. So what were you thinking as the child during the telling session? Because if you're tell like, go brush your teeth or you have a mouthful of cavities. Okay, so uh, first of all, I don't know why you came in here. Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. she yelling at me in the first place? Okay, I don't want to brush my teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I'm thinking at my two-year-old. No, I'm watching Coco Melon. I'm watching TV. I want to. I yeah. want to. Or, <laughs> you know, don't forget your coat. I'm not cold. I don't want my coat. I don't need my coat. I don't want it. I'm already thinking resist. Right. Versus if you asked me, now I can't resist because there's nothing to resist because you asked me a question. So now Mm -hmm. my brain automatically has to think for an answer. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I definitely hear the points and the difference because in my mind, I'm like, there's no negotiation. Get your coat. We um during the classes we have these tool um kits mm-hmm. and I walk with them because I always feel like you know you fish through them when you need that quick on the hand mm-hmm. and for even what you said limited choices just because you have a choice doesn't mean you have any choice in the world especially for younger children right right if I say your choice is this or this that's it you have a, a a boundary that you still have to stay within, but I gave you the power of choosing which one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to brush it now or you're going to watch your show and brush it or what, you know what I mean? Like whatever, that's that incident or mm-hmm. you're going to bring your coat or I'm going to, ju- or you're going to just hold it in your hand. Because if you think about it, if them, but it's out, really not like, it's not really a them, choice, but you, you feel like you have a choice. You feel empowered. Yeah. Because we all want to feel some kind of significance or belonging. And Mm -hmm. as parents, I think we, um, especially millennial parents, we were so busy breaking those generational curses, right? That we feel like we have to do everything for them. We we Mm -hmm. can't give them a choice. We can't give them an option because we know best. But they still have to. Or you're so nice. You're the friend. And there's no boundary. Mm -hmm. exactly and it's neither way because if i give you an option it's to empower you as a young decision maker but because that's a life scale of a limited choice yeah these are still your boundaries because again you still are the adult and another thing is just realizing that in some instances it's not any of that because if mm-hmm. i'm in a parking lot it's not do you want to hold my hand or do you not no oh, we're yeah, in yeah. we're in the parking lot and you are going to hold my hand because right. again we've already talked about this though in the home and you know what would happen and it's if okay you did it. and it's for cry. your safety it's okay yeah. for you to cry you know what baby i see i'm going to acknowledge the fact that i see that you're upset Cause when I want to do what I want to do and someone's telling me what to do, you know what, mm-hmm. that's going to make me mad. But my job yeah. as your parent is to keep you safe. And Absolutely. as a toddler, I can scoop you up. You're going to kick and scream and that's okay. Right. Positive doesn't mean I'm smiling and laughing the whole time. It just means that I'm respectable. Mm. I love this. I-, I love it because like I said, it definitely changed my perspective because I instantly am like, Oh, my kid has a choice. Uh, they don't know that I'm the parent and they're the child, like instantly. But the more we talked about it and shared the demonstration, it's like you said, you do, it's a life lesson because you do want your child. I mean, your child will eventually grow up and be an adult and be a parent maybe one day. And they have to learn these things, but also knowing they still know you're the parent. They still know you're the, you know, you have the authority, but they also don't feel like they don't have a say in anything. You know, um, I was rebellious. I was a rebellious child because it was so tight. There was no wiggle room. There was no room for anything. So I always felt Mm -hmm. like I had to rebel always because I'm just so, you know, chokehold there. And I know that's not everyone. But I'm just saying, you know, 
having mm -hmm. a choice doesn't mean you do whatever you want. But it would have yeah. been nice to have some kind of say in something instead right. of always feeling like you're being moved around like a puzzle piece. Yeah. Because that's, you that's are true. a kid. Because you are a kid. Damn. Yeah. I have a thought too. <laughs> yeah. I'm still a person too, even though I know sometimes it's like, you oftentimes hear, and this could be a part of like generational curses that we try to break. Like, you know, you're a kid, you don't have a choice. You don't have an opinion. You're like, but you do, you know, and I, again, that power struggle, but I'm glad we went through these so people can see different ways, you know, to parent. Like we said before, there's no perfect parent. There Absolutely is no manual. Not. Like, of course you have to do what works for you. But I know for me, I'm definitely, I mean, He's young, but we'll start because he is developing and has to understand right from wrong and all of that. But it will definitely be because that's how I had. I mean, my parents, it, they weren't tight hold. You know, I definitely feel like there were boundaries and I knew what they were. And I ended up, you know, turning out. I think I turned out OK, but of course, um, <laughs> of course. it wasn't that because my mom will always tell me, like, I don't want you to feel like you have to rebel or that you can't talk to me, you know? And so she, you know, definitely, even though I, like I said, I feel like she was more disciplinary than my dad, but I knew my dad, it was more so like, okay, I know I can't do certain things because if he gets mad, like I know for sure I'm in trouble, <laughs> you know? Um, but just having those conversations with your kids too, and not feeling like you're juggling power, who has the power in the house. So because it's already I, established with you as the parent. Yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. already have that, you know, right. um, you mentioned a point that I love that you have your parents. And I talk about now that when my kids are in trouble, I don't want them to think, Oh my God, I don't want my mom to find out. I want mm -hmm. them to think, Oh my God, I need to call my mom. Yeah. And it's making sure that I have those positive connections with them for them to Absolutely. trust me in those spaces. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you for coming on and sharing, you know, yes. your what you do and these demonstrations. So with that being said, please let the listeners know how they can find you um, and any tools or resources that you have that you want to share with them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So on IG, I am no underscore perfect underscore parent. And that is the community of parents where I am doing the reels and all that fun <laughs> stuff and giving you the information in a way that I feel like is easy and digestible because mm -hmm. I never want to come off as judging, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like I started with spanking, yelling, screaming because that was all I knew. And mm -hmm. as I went through um, the research with positive discipline, practicing it in my classroom and juggling all of that, I saw how impactful it was for my family and my classroom. So mm -hmm. I got into doing my workshops. Um, I have my website, connectedcorrections.org, and you can subscribe there. Um, once a month, I host live workshops. I do online workshops. And I have, if you're here in Atlanta, I do a lunch and learn to where we're doing um, for three weeks these um, activities. And mm -hmm. you got to experience some of them today. It's not lecture style. It's definitely hands on. And I like just building communities because it helps bring that reality of whatever parenting style you have. You are not alone. You know, everybody mm -hmm. gets frustrated at some point during parenting and as long as we're able to fill each other's toolboxes with different tools that we can use in those moments i feel like that is the part that strengthens you as a parent to where you're not burnt out you're not right. always on 10 always frustrated because i don't think no matter how you discipline your child no parent likes to feel that right no parent likes to feel defeated no parent likes to feel like they're not good enough mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> I also right now, also, um, I have uh, positive parenting affirmations um, mm -hmm. that are on the website that is a PDF downloadable where you can go check it out on um, connectedcorrections.org. And the reason those affirmations are really important to me is because 
I feel like a lot of parents, especially right now with having to juggle work, some of them still have kids at home um, or trying to, mm -hmm. you know, find that work life balance and right. not feeling good enough, especially mm -hmm. in this whole boss mom movement where mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's like that for you. But for me, it's always feeling like you can not find that balance or you know what? I'm really good at my career right now, but then home mm -hmm. is struggling or I'm really good at home, but then I don't have time to work on my business. And you right. find yourself doubting your parenting skills, but mm -hmm. just having something to where you can remind yourself or a quick tool. Like I said, I print them out. I stick them places where I can physically see them to mm -hmm. where I'm reminding myself that even on the bad days, I am still a good mom. Because yeah. I know we get inside our heads sometimes and we go down that rabbit hole to where one mistake will have you doubting your whole parenting. And yep. it's just reminding yourself, like I said, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. Absolutely. The only perfect parent is the one that's happy and healthy. Hello. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I appreciate you because this was definitely an eye opener. Um, so... Hope you ladies, or if there's any guys listening, um, take heed to this information. It's just another way of parenting. Not to say it's the grand way of doing things, but Correct. hopefully Correct. you've learned something. You follow um, Shauna and Shauna K and you <laughs> continue to learn. And, you know, it's a journey. Just parenthood is a journey itself. So thank you again for joining us. This is thank episode you. six of season four and closing out with you ladies stay bossy and stay motivated and i will chat with you all next time hey ladies if you enjoyed today's episode do me a favor and leave a five-star rating and review you can find the boss mom movement streaming on apple and google podcasts amazon music spotify and youtube want to keep up with the movement visit my website at thebossmommovement.com and subscribe thanks for the support and i'll see you next time